What's up everybody, it's your boy Marsman here. Today we're talking about Double Dragon Gaiden Rise of the Dragons. Ever since 1988, the Double Dragon series has been a classic arcade style side-scrolling action game that rivals the titles of Battletoads and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. With what is considered the 10th installment of the series, Modus Games is looking to recapture the magic of the older titles. Do they succeed in bringing back the classic vibes of the social arcade genre? Is it worth playing? I give the good, the bad, and answer these questions in my final verdict. Let's start off with the good. The gameplay of Double Dragon Gaiden is pretty damn fun. It's pretty basic with standard attacks, special combinations for each character, and action moves like grappling. Each character has their own combo attacks that make them unique in the way they play. Before you get started, you Get to pick your primary and secondary fighter to progress your story with. Once you make your selection, you set up your settings, which adjusts the difficulty, which has major impacts on how much you earn throughout your playthrough. The idea is that if you fight through the different sectors in New York City, you rack up money for defeating guards and bosses. After each section you progress through, you can either upgrade characters, buy tokens for unlockables, or keep your cash for later fights. One of the reasons this game is fun is because the gameplay loop is simple. Rack up combos and eliminate enemies in groups to keep the money flowing to add to your upgrades. But even with that being the case, it's not as easy as just button mashing to victory. You need to be smart in how you use your abilities in certain situations. What makes the gameplay better is the fact that there are so many characters you can pick from. From the start you have the four protagonists to choose from, but the more tokens you earn from spending in-game money, the more you get access to. Characters range from more close combat in nature using shields and blades, to ranged fighters that use guns and even bazookas. Picking between the different characters and figuring out the best combination does make the game even more fun because if you do it right, the combat gets outrageous. I feel like the diverse characters that you face off in the game was a really underrated feature. The gang leaders each have their own fighting styles and you need to be smart in how you go after them. Even the diverse guards you face each have their own ways to combat, which means you need to always adjust as you go through the different sections. I think making the game challenging, but also feel easy enough to pick up and play really did give some bonus points here for me. Lastly, the art style and music really did impress and I think it recaptured the classic style that made Double Dragon so fun. The 8-bit art style the game uses gives some retro feel to the title, but the overall look is vibrant and gives a unique style compared to other side-scrollers out there. The music has a really catchy and intense track that go along with each situation and give an emotional connection to the action that is happening in the game. The balance between the music and level design are really different compared to other side-scrollers, and you have to give a lot of credit to Modus Games here. I think the various character designs based on the gangs that are present are really cool and give each group their own style. The Okada clan seems similar to the Yakuza in its samurai tendencies, the killers led by MG Willie, more of a militant gang, the use of their military weaponry really gives them a different look compared to others, the royals led by the duke have many other martial artists that join the gang due to being kicked out of their own kind of give them their own rogue-like kind of feeling towards them. And the followers of Anubis are more of a cult in their art style and behavior. Each gang has their own unique levels and designs that make them feel like their own separate entities that are actually competing for power within New York City. All diverse, all different in their own way. And with the good, we have to talk about the bad. One of the problems I had in my playthrough is that it just feels short. I had reached the final level on my first playthrough within the first hour of downloading the game from Steam. I started after I had lost and beat the game officially within another 90 minutes of playtime. I think they should have made the story aspect a lot longer to make the game feel more complete. I think the story is very basic for a double dragon game, but they left a lot of things unfinished and they could have made each level longer to feel like a complete story. Generally, I understand this is meant to be completed several times so that you can try out different characters that you unlock, but I feel as if this could, should have been done a lot longer and it just felt too short. When you face off against your first gang, the level is complete within its first five to seven minutes, which is just straight up outrageous. Make the levels more diverse, give us some mechanics to do depending on the level. Give us something to do to make it feel longer. Anyone that is relatively skilled in side-scrolling action games can straight up beat this entire thing within an hour. And I feel like it would just do so much better overall if you just added some more content here. Building unlimited story, I feel like with how cool the characters were, the limited we got to know about them is pretty unfortunate. The story would have been so much better if we were able to dive in more into the characters that we were going to face off against. Imagine learning about them more by the time you face them so you can fully understand their motives for taking over the city or more about their backgrounds. Some characters have so much mystery behind their origin that I feel like giving them some screen time would have done them wonders. Not just in extending the game, but to give them their due before you don't see them again. Overall, I felt like Double Dragon Gaiden, Rise of 
of the Dragons did a lot of good and some bad. The basic gameplay loop and diverse characters really shine on my playthrough. They give the game a lot of life and they make this world of Double Dragons so unique that I would enjoy if they expanded more into it. Unique art style brings back the nostalgia of the classic era arcade titles and for anyone that is a fan of side scroller action games then you will love it. Even that being the case I feel like for the $20 to $25 price point there should be way more. In comparison the Cuphead games are roughly around the same price and have a 10 and a half hour playthrough time while Double Dragon Gaiden Rise of the Dragons is hitting a at a 90 to 120 minutes. Overall I'm giving Double Dragon Gaiden a 7.2 out of 10. I had a really fun experience in my playthrough with some outrageous moments, but I think it would be worth waiting for this game to go on sale. If we get some expansions to the story or we get a discount to the already fun title, then I think it'd be super worth it. I think if you're a fan of any arcade style game or you enjoy co-op experiences, then I can guarantee you that you're going to enjoy your playthrough. My only concern is that it may not be enough bang for your buck. But what do you think about Double Dragon Gaiden Rise of the Dragons? Let me know what you think in the comments below. If you like this type of content, make sure you hit that thumbs up and subscribe for more future content. Until next time, this is Marsman signing off. Peace out, guys.